So, um, um, like I said, without further ado, let's get started. Try to keep these to a quick um, one hour, uh, pharmacology basics and math, and at the end we're going to do a question and answer session. Um, if you, again, my name is Kendall Wyatt. If you've not been to any of these before, um, looks usually about 40-50% of you guys have been to a webinar before. We appreciate it. Um, I manage all the content here at Picmonic, um, and um, of course I uh, just finished med school, went to nursing school, and I'm also as a paramedic before that. Still a paramedic. You never stop being a nurse. Um, it's just kind of something that always goes on. Just really quick about us. Um, what is Picmonic? What do we do here? We take everything you're going to see today, all the little tidbits, um, is all the character that fits in the back end. So we've got some conversion picmonics, um, some other things, um, not heavy on the topics today, but we've got a few. But everything you see, all the characters are some type of uh, content piece that's in our picmonic system. Um, and as always, I always have my little handy dandy picmonic cup. My mouth gets really dry because I talk a lot, and um, so I always have to drink my picmonic cup, and that's, of course, how I make 25 cents every drink. So something like herpes, um, we've got the herpes harp. If you're into drugs, um, warfarin would be the war fairy here. Um, oxytocin would be the octopus toe. So you can kind of see um, how characters map into everything you need to memorize during nursing school and whatnot. Today we're going to talk about math, um, which is really just application and thinking it through, and that's really, really, really um, what's important. Eric asks how often we do webinars. We do them pretty regularly. We don't have them on a set schedule. We do them um, uh, pretty much every few weeks. We have a live one. And as I will say lots of times, um, you can check out all of our videos on YouTube. Um, just look us up, Picmonic Video. Um, you can check out the free webinars. There's a top one for every single topic, pretty much a recorded version. And um, then we do the live ones from time to time. So if you're a trial member, even if you're a tri trial member, um, you'll get the email notifications to tell you about the webinars. So sign up for a Picmonic account, even the free one. So let's get started. So what we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about a lot of stuff. And I really want you guys to try to think through it. We'll stop when we talk about equations and doing the actual math. Um, but um, we're going to talk to you some things at the end. So we're going to talk about medication administration basics. Um, then we're going to talk about some routes of administration, uh, just basic things again, some high yield points of things you need to remember. The most common things that you're going to see on an exam, I like to try to point out um, if this is a review for you. So if it's a review for you and, and you know, you've know done all this stuff, great. If you're in the midst of doing um, uh, your pharmacology uh, course or pharmacology or pharm math course, then um, this is really good, important, and you can kind of pick up where you're at and use it as practice. Um, so we're, and then second, we're going to talk about conversions. Um, this is a good concept, and it's good to review. Um, when I do this webinar, some, you know, often people don't necessarily um, understand the method that I'm using for my madness, uh, but you understand the concept of breaking everything down and converting, and that's what's important. Um, so um, we get a lot of good feedback for this webinar. The last section, of course, is equations. So we're just going to do some uh, some practice equations to talk through all the concepts that we've talked about how to do equations. So first off, medication administration and routes administration. Let's get started. The basics, um, the easiest thing right away is the rights, right? I mean, there are lots of rights. I feel like when I was in nursing school and med, you know when I was a paramedic, there were literally there were only five rights, and then there were six, and then now there's seven, and there's lots of rights. I mean, there's so many. There's the patient bill of rights and all these things. But the important thing to remember is always checking. Um, uh, sorry, uh, so uh, it's always actually making sure that you do the, the five minimum rights. Um, and um, there, yes, there are seven, and that's important to remember if you literally need to regurgitate a bunch of information. But the five are the things that are going to keep you from making a medication error. And that's really the point of them um, is to have those right five. So um, you're always going to make sure you have the right patient documenting, checking, um, depending on facility policy and whatnot, you may need to check two modes of identification, asking the patient their date of birth, and what else? Maybe identifying their arm band. Um, and depending on facility policy dictates what you should be doing or not, but the idea is to identify the patient through some means. And you see that vary um, from test to test um, in your particular school. Right time, the timing of the drug, um, the dose, the actual drug, the drug name, um, which drug it is, and um, which route. So one of the ones, uh, that I see all the time, and I'm use this as an example, after we talk about the right dose, so that which dose of the medication. Every time I do any kind of med farm medication question, um, because I literally mix up numbers all the time, uh, I always, 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 always write it down. So today when I'm talking about this stuff, I'm actually going to write down some numbers because I don't want to say it out loud wrong. And it's a common thing you're going to do, and I want you to do that. I want you to really think about when you're doing these questions. Because every time I've done farm math questions, if you gave me a test right now, I would probably miss a couple. 
because I go too fast or I don't stick to the same things. Um, I use this example, um, they, you know, why don't airplanes crash all the time? Uh, because there's not a lot of airplanes in the sky? No, that's incorrect. They run through checklists of everything that has to be checked every single time before they take off, before they land, once they're in the flight, in, in the air. There's a list of checklists of do all of these things right in order, and that is really important. And if you do that, you're not going to miss anything. Um, and that's what we want to do. So if I took the medication epinephrine, um, epinephrine is the worst one for all of these things. Epinephrine can be given via ET tube. Epinephrine can be given subcutaneously. Epinephrine can be given IV. The route of epinephrine, epinephrine can be injected um, into um, sub-Q, right? It can, be, can have lots of uses. But epinephrine also can be confused with norepinephrine. So make sure you have the right drug. Make sure you have the actual the right drug, the right route, and then the right dose. Because we know epinephrine, if we're giving it for anaphylaxis versus giving it for, um, for, a, cardiac, uh, for a cardiac situation, it's a lot different. Um, and that is really important. That's a really common, um, a really common medication error. Um, Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth said she can't, she can't hear me. Sometimes we get this with GoToWebinar pretty commonly. Um, if you have any trouble, you just um, sometimes you can log out and log back in. It'll work for you if if you can't hear me. Just check your sound and whatnot. Um, every every webinar there's always one or two people that um, have a couple of issues, so it's pretty normal. Uh, but um, you know, you can, uh, yeah, she says she's good now. Well, great. That's great, Elizabeth. Um, you're so let's get forward. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on all these basic topics, but really understand routes of administration with this too. Um, understanding all of the routes. Um, this is a really common, uh, a common basic question when you're doing fundamentals and, and when you're doing farm basics. You know, what are all the routes of the medications? It's really important just to be aware that there are lots of routes um, because you can um, absorb medications. So you can apply every single one of these types of routes has a high yield question that goes along to, with it. I'm not going to give you all of them, but, you know, make sure you understand, um, you know, buccal you're going to be putting in between the cheeks. Um, you know, in between the gums there. Rectal, you can give rectal Valium, right, for a seizing patient. You can give um, rectal uh, medications that way. Um, things can go in through tubes like ET tubes like we were talking about. Transdermal um, uh, medications being on the skin, we know there's a big one there with making sure, there's a whole, we have a picmonic on just those alone. Rotating the sites, uh, making sure that you don't do what? If you had a transdermal patch of medication, um, what's the difference between a transdermal patch of medication versus a um, cardiac electro or a car, you know a, um, a cardiac patch to put up for cardiac monitoring. What are the two differences there? And there's a really stark difference that you need to remember. One you need to do what with. One you need to do not do with. Well, if you want to put on a um, uh, a um, so let's say you put on a um, oh, I've forgotten the dag on word. You want to put on an electrode or you want to put on cardiac monitoring. Pacing pads, that's what I was trying to say. Pacing pads, that needs to be adhered close to the chest. And you may shave the chest to put that on, right? You may shave the chest to put a cardiac pacing pad on. But if you're putting on a medication that's a transdermal medication, you would not shave the chest. You would try to put it in an area that's not shaved. Because you could cause a very serious irritation because the medication can cause a lot of irritation. Really important. Drops and sprays, um, knowing how to put um, drops and sprays um, in there. Uh, where you put the drops, um, you know, things like that are really important. Um, just those tidbits. If you if you just review all those um, tidbits, uh, transdermal, uh, you know, eye drops, um, and giving things to different tubes and different routes, um, it's not as important to memorize in the beginning, but more when you come back to the end and you're reviewing when you're finally ready to take your NCLEX, because it's all going to make sense. Um, so if this is not, if you're not at the end, then this is it sounds like a whole lot of hodgepodge. But knowing that you can give um, um, there are, what, what's a good thing with inhalers? If uh, What's an important teaching point regarding inhalers that is important to know? What's the high yield point there? You guys aren't very, aren't very question answering today. So with inhalers, is right, is um, you want to make sure that, Sandra says, use a spacer. Yeah, you may want to use a spacer, but not required. But that is one of them. The other one is if it's a steroidal medication, is making sure that they rinse their mouth. I mean, the really common one that you see. So that's right, um, and, and that's important as well. So again, other routes: intradermal, sub-Q, intramuscular IV, epidural, intrathecal, intraosseous, intraperitoneal. Other picmonics you can go in and see all of these um, routes of administration. So that was just a quick little rundown, just so we're saying we're complete. The next section is conversions before we get to the big one and the one that everybody is literally um, uh, the, the stuff that we're going to run through 
uh, sections. The first thing we have to understand is reviewing conversions. This is the if I, when I when I work with a student, if I tutor a student on farm math, the majority of their problems, 50% of the let me step back, 50% of the problems are literally not doing the conversion. Um, they they converted wrong. They converted wrong, and if you get the conversions down, then you can do on the math. So you kind of um, I say this a lot with all of the um, uh, all of the uh, all of the equations or all of the prop or all the every time you have problems in an area, you're trying to learn. You have to be really good about evaluating where you're wrong and being honest with yourself. Um, so where are you are you having trouble converting? Why did you miss the question? Did you just do bad math? Do you not understand how to get the equations out? Or is it, um, you know, did you have a problem converting? Did you read the question wrong? Because um, there are always those, all those ones, and you kind of have to just do your own little evaluation and a, and a tally. So we're going to talk about conversions. Uh, conversions are super important. One of the ones, the biggest one that I see people mix up all the time, and it's, uh, you know, when you just burn this logic check in your mind, is one pound, or one kilogram is 2.2 .2 pounds. If you memorize one thing, um, and I like to use a logic check of my own weight, which of course is a very light, um, a very light weight, uh, of course. But um, if I use my own weight, it's not 250 pounds. But I know that pounds are 2.2 one kilogram. I just remember that pounds are more. Um, so you know, I remember that I'm in America, and America is maybe more of a more overweight area, possibly, maybe we're in denial. But pounds are more, so more pounds, so 2.2 .2 pounds. So every time I convert any equation from kilograms to pounds, I just do this logic check at the end and say, okay, I converted to pounds. Is it a bigger number? Yes or no? If I say no, then I know that I got my math mixed around. I divide it instead of multiply. And I see that so many times. People divide instead of multiply. Literally probably one of the easiest things that you can make sure you do to not miss any questions. Super, super, super important. Um, I see that so many times. So if I have 250 pounds, um, and I want to go to kilograms, well then I need to go to a smaller number. If I want to go to a smaller number, I need to divide the big number. So I divide it by 2.2 .2 to get 113 or so. Um, and of course we round um, accordingly. Most of your equations, as we're doing any type of equation, you want to round at the last point if we're doing equations. Try not to round in the very beginning or do any very large rounding. Um, because you, when you do math equations, um, I see so many people round to a big number in the beginning, and then their number that they're getting is one or two or three off because they've got kind of an evil nursing instructor that didn't write the question very well, and that's fine. But you want to make sure that if you round at the end, you're more likely to get the the, the most you're going to get most most close to the correct answer um, at the end. So. Uh, with that being said, the next one is um, inches to centimeters. I see this all the time as well. Really common question, um, and this is usually regarding, um, you know, measuring wounds or, um, or measuring a, a child's height um, or giving um, a Braslow's tape for, you know, giving a height of a patient to measure things out, and that's remembering 2.54 centimeters is one inch. You just have to remember. And um, remember, one inch is 2.54 centimeters. Literally just remember it. Um, so if you have 12 inches, that's 12. 12 inches is 2.54 times 30, so it's 30.48 centimeters. Um, so there are so many different ones you just have to solidly memorize, which are, you know, there are pygmonics to help you memorize the things. So 2.2 .2 pounds in one kilogram, one inch, 2.54 centimeters. Um, and some other um, important ones, and this is one that's really important, is um, mLs to ounces. This is the one thing, every time I talk about this, is um, uh, I talk about um, pygmonics and all the Canadians come in and they say, oh, all your pygmonics are in U.S. units. Well, we, of course, are based in the U.S. originally and we are um, adding more international units, um, you know, SI units. But what's important is to know the conversion, whether, no matter where you're at. And one ounce, of course, is about 30 mLs. And we make that easy for math. Um, you could use 29.5 mLs, 5.7 mLs, that's important, yes. But, oh, careful stitch. Um, so, um, oh, sorry, we have Stitch here today with the webinar. Um, he's hiding in the background, so he's not um, not being the most cooperative and being quiet today. Uh, yeah, so, <laughs> Sanders says, hi, Stitch. Um, come here, Stitch. Come here. Careful, careful. There we go. Uh, so, uh, anyway. Uh, one ounce is 30 mLs. So when you need to give, um, what's the one thing you're always going to see this with? You're always going to see it with children's medications, especially something that needs to be given for mouth by mouth. Um, you're going to see that very, very commonly. And what I like to just think about with this is just 
attach what you don't know to something you do know. And what do you know? Well, I know bottles. Um, and when I talk about bottles, I'm not talking about um, uh, medication bottles or alcohol bottles. I'm talking about soda bottles or water bottles. And um, a water bottle, a standard water bottle, is approximately um, how many mLs? Well, it's about 500 mLs. And in a careful stitch, um, it's about 500 mLs. So if I have 500 mLs in a water bottle, then I know that that's about 16 ounces. It's actually 16, what is it, 16.33 or 16.6. So I've associated something that I know so I could easily just guesstimate well, how many ounces are in an ounce. So I know that that's about 500 mLs or 480 mLs is a 16 ounce bottle. Um, and you see that very commonly. It's a standard size that we see all the time. So attach it to something you know. Uh, let's make sure I got all my questions. Oh, Morgan says, show us the dog. Oh my goodness, uh, I usually don't do this till the, come here, Stitch, come here. Now he's mad on the other side, he's pouting. Um, he'll come over, come here, Stitch. Uh, so uh, it's important to remember something you know, attach something you know to something you don't know. Oh, oh, oh yeah, there we go, oh yeah. Yeah, he thinks he's gonna stay up here the whole time now. See, he's, he thinks he's winning, see, yeah. Anyway, so the point is, attach it to something that you do know and, and you can do well. Um, he, he doesn't realize that people are watching him, like, he can't figure it out. Um, this is a weird fish on the screen, so. So let's talk about this with, um, here's the example of what I was talking about. We've got these water bottles right here. These are the ones you're talking about. And every single one of them, oh, there it is, 16.9 ounces. So 16.9 ounces is how many mLs? If you just do that conversion in your mind, it's easily going to be able to, to match something that you maybe can't remember to something that you know. And everything we're going to do today, we're going to do that exact same thing when we run through a couple of these examples. Now, with that water bottle, there's another level of what we can do to it. We can attach multiple things. Now, what I can tell you at Picmonic is we know more than anything about memory, how to memorize things, how to learn things. I mean, our product is research proven um, to help you memorize things more, faster, longer, right? Remember everything forever. What we know is you have to create anchors and associations with things that you don't know the things you do. So if we're talking about this water bottle, and we know a water bottle is, if we're trying to remember 30, um, 30 mLs is one ounce, so we've got that, and we can anchor that to the water bottle, 16 ounce water bottle is about 500 mLs. And if we know that 500 mLs, well, how much does 500 mLs weigh? Hmm. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Somebody just talking about stitch, oh my goodness. How many, how much does five mLs, 500 mLs weigh? That's important to remember. Oh my God, you guys are so awful, literally like 300 messages about Stitch. <laughs> so uh, 500 mLs is about what weight? Well, you can remember 500 mLs is about a pound. So when you think about, um, when you're learning later, if you're not in, this, in the scenario of learning about um, congestive heart failure and we need to worry about how much weight do you gain in 24 hours, more than one pound is 500 mL. So that's 500 mL of fluid. If we're thinking about that, we can attach things that we know to things we don't know. So if you are retaining fluid or you're losing weight, you can also think about your ins and outs and you can say, okay, well, I put a thousand of fluid in and I only got 500 out. So technically that patient should weigh one pound more or they may, I mean, there are other ways to lose weight, sweating and, and respiration and whatnot. But, um, you know, that's a, a, a definitely a thing you can think about. And of course, uh, Natalia says um, 500 mLs is a half liter. Okay, yes, true. Um, you're not wrong. Well, you don't win a prize for that. The last one of the conversions um, are teaspoons, tablespoons. Um, so teaspoons, little baby teaspoons, I always just think about a T as a little tiny P, and that's 5 mLs. Um, I just remember the one thing, um, the one little teaspoon is 5 mLs, and I remember that a tablespoon is really big, and um, you know, I wish that I had three people at the table, um, two other people aside me, and that's three teaspoons is a tablespoon. So five times three is then a tablespoon is how many mLs is 15. Now, you're thinking about this and you're like, oh my God, why can't we just do some math? A lot of these things, the, the how, um, if you're ever thinking about math equations and you see people and they say, okay, how the, did you figure out that so fast? How did you get to the answer? Well, I did it in my head. What they're doing is they're associating something they know to something they didn't know and they've matched it and they're able to create those associations faster. They're making the connections to do it faster. So if you looked at this example, well, how many um, teaspoons is 45 mLs? 
or how many tablespoons, sorry, how many tablespoons is 45 mLs? A tablespoon is 15 mLs, so 15 mLs, if I need to give 45, that's three tablespoons. But what if I need to use teaspoons? Well, I wouldn't want to use teaspoons because who's going to measure nine teaspoons of something? But nine teaspoons is, of course, um, would be equivalent to that amount, and that's what you have to think about. Yeah, Arlene. Oh, it looks like Arlene's here today. We know Arlene. So uh, that's right, Arlene. That's correct. So um, when we think about this, let's give this medication um, right here, or this is one, one of our questions. We're going to start easy, of course. So we're going to administer 15 mLs of medication to your patient, but you only have a teaspoon. So how many teaspoons do you give? Simple, right? This is a very simple question. We're going to get a lot harder, but if you think about it, so if I take what, first off, you have to, even in the easiest of questions, you have to say, okay, what is the question asking me? Every single nursing question in the world, you must do this. I don't care what it is. If you don't do it, you're going to make a lot of simple mistakes. What is the question asking me? Well, the question is asking me how many teaspoons should be given to give 15 mLs of medication. I said the exact same thing the question asked, but I restated it, and it makes sense, and it's correct. Sometimes you can even maybe jot that down if you really want to do really well and practice, right? Practice running through the motions. Remember your checklist. Make sure you do everything that's on the checklist. So, of course, we take 15, we divide it by three, or we divide it by five, sorry, and we end up with three teaspoons as a tablespoon. I mean, that's what we need to know. So how much do we need to give? What do we need to do? We divide it by the teaspoon amount, which is five, to get three. A very simple example of what we're going to talk about. Um, and that's right. Um, lots of you guys uh, set things on here. Um, yeah, Amita, Amita says, I want to know some IV fluid calculations. Amita? Nothing gets jumped into right away. Just sit back, calm down, pet your dog that's nearby. We're going to build. We're building up to a lot harder questions as we go. But you have to start with the basics, and we can't always assume everybody knows the basics because 90% or 50% of all the problems that I see when the student comes in and has trouble is the basics. They're missing the basics every single time. So really, just talking about conversion before we get into more calculations, which is the last part, is converting kilograms, grams, milligrams, and micrograms. This is a very simple concept. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, but we're going to run through it just to make sure you're doing this. Because, again, same example. So many of these, you're going to miss the question because you forgot to do the conversion. I guarantee it. I gave you kilograms, and you should have had it in grams, or you had grams, and you didn't use kilograms, and somebody was trying to trick you. And in real life, this doesn't happen so often, but in your questions and on your exams, especially if I was your instructor, I would try to trick you up in the very beginning with very basic questions, asking you these types of things to force you to make sure that you multiply and divide. So if we're going from a small, a large, a large size number, a kilogram number, to grams, to milligrams, to micrograms, well, I need to multiply because I know that there are more micrograms than there more micrograms to one kilogram. But if I'm going from a small number a small amount of thing, which there are lots of, to a big number I need to divide. So let's just talk through that basic concept very basically um, to just make sure you think about it in this way. A kilogram is a kilogram is a kilogram. That's a lot, right? A kilo means a thousand. Um, a, a kilogram, it, kilo means thousand, medical terminology. So a kilo is a thousand grams. Grams I like to think is kind of our, our staple. If I can remember grams, then I can remember which way to go from grams. So a thousand grams well, if there's a thousand grams, well, how many milligrams is that? How many milligrams is a thousand grams? A thousand grams. Well, a thousand grams, we need a thousand grams. Well, if we're coming down, it's one gram, right? So one kilogram is a thousand grams, which is one gram. A kilogram is 1,000 grams. But what if we have one gram? One gram is how many milligrams? A thousand milligrams. It's a thousand every single time. Now, when we talk about this all the way across, why do we try not to go? Did you see how hard it was to try to go from one kilogram to a thousand grams to how many how many milligrams is a thousand grams? It's very very hard to do very quickly. But if you take a thousand grams and you know that this one one gram is a thousand milligrams, then you can know that you just need to take a thousand times a thousand to get your answer. So let's even go to milligrams. So a milligram, one milligram by itself, we move to the right to micrograms. How many micrograms is one milligram? A thousand. Simple enough. Now, let's make it a little harder. One kilogram by itself. Jasmine says um, uh, Jasmine says she had to do her um, 
I had to do a HESI calculation three times because of um, uh, because of distractors, and that's right. That's what this is supposed to do. Um, they're trying to trick you with the distractors. The MCG versus the MG versus the G versus the KG. I, I think we could make a little wrap out of that and making sure you look at that. We're going to talk about those examples. Um, yeah, Keisha says her farm instructor puts the types of questions throughout all of the exams, and that's what you do to make sure you pay attention. So you don't make these simple mistakes on, on your um, on your actual board exam. You'd hate to take, if you have 75 questions and you could get two right just from the easy, this simple stuff, oh, it's so dumb, it's so simple, but that's very true. So one kilogram, what's one kilogram? Well, we already talked about it. We're going to go across the way here. So one kilogram, of course, is 1,000 grams. We know that. But 1,000 grams, we know if we know this this equates, right, 1,000 grams is 1,000 milligrams. How many is 1,000 grams? Well, 1,000 grams is 1,000 times 1,000 which is a million, a million milligrams. And then we know that we have a million, then we go to a billion. So we have lots and lots and lots of giant numbers here, and that's where we have to think about this. Um, and we talk about, you see people talking about moving zeros and doing those types of things. If you learn that way, that's great, um, adding three zeros because it's a thousand. I think that's a good way. That's how I um, do it myself, but that's not how I found it a great way to make sure I teach it every time. Um, so a you know, just think of this kilogram is a thousand. So I know if if I have one of them, then I need to go one gram. I need to go down a level. Then I need to multiply by a thousand. Remember, if we're going um, from over here to kilograms, over to micrograms, we always uh, multiply. If we're going from micrograms up to a kilogram, we always divide. So five kilograms, of course, five is just five times all the numbers that we have across here. Five kilograms is five thousand grams. Five million milligrams. Five billion micrograms. MCG. Um, what medications often given micrograms? Well, there's a few of them, um, but the big one I see pretty often is um, is uh, Synthroid or Levothyroxine because we don't use we don't use um, uh, trade names on our exams. My clicker is not working very well today. So what if we have some hard ones? And this is where these types of things are. It's going to trick you up as we get to. Um, the dose of these calculations we're going to try at the end because I didn't put the easy stuff in there. So we're going to work through it, and I expect you to be able to work through it at the same time. So 500, my, 500 grams. 500 grams is how many kilograms? Well, I have grams, which is a small number. I need to go to a big number. So if I have a small number, I need to go to a big number. Do I multiply or divide? Well, that means I need to divide, right? I divide 500 grams because I've got a, a, grams are smaller than kilograms. So I need to divide to go to the bigger number. If that confuses you, Think about pounds and kilograms. You can think about pounds are more of a quantity, and kilograms are a smaller number, so you have to divide to get to the number. So um, here we've got 500 grams. 500 grams is how many kilograms? 0 0.5, and um, that's absolutely right. Arlene says, good, I have my cup. I do have my cup, Arlene. Um, that's right. I'm making those 25 and 30 cents. That's right. So it's 0 0.5. You guys are right. So we take 500, we divide by 1,000, and get 0 0.5. And every single time I do this, it doesn't matter, and today's no different. Someone always say, hey, why can't we just go past this? Why can't we go? This is the important stuff. You've got to understand these basics, because if, if you already knew how to do all of this, mm, you probably wouldn't be you know, missing questions. You've got to start with the basics to make sure you get it, and you've got to th go through it every single time. So again, if we had that right there and we had our 0 0.5, let me see if I got my, oh, sorry, here we go. Sorry, we got a 4 grams. 4 grams. So how, 4 grams is how many um, milligrams? 4 grams. Here's our 4 grams. I just figured out how to do this little laser pointer thing today, and it literally has just made my day. Because I used to have to spin a lot to get the, the big cursor to show up, but now they got this little laser pointer, I feel like I'm new. It's, it's like a new hot toy. Um, so four grams, what, well, what do we need to do? Well, four grams to get to a smaller number, to split it up, to divide it all out, uh, divide it all out is a bad choice of words, to make it into smaller chunks, I need, or more chunks, tiny pieces, I need to multiply them, right? I need to break it into smaller pieces, and that is um, multiply. So I need to multiply by what? Well, it's a thousand, so it's then four, um, 4,000 milligrams. Now, an important point I forgot to mention, I'm just going to go back here really quick to this slide. Because this is really important as you're writing numbers. Um, this is a, one of the basic things that I see so often, um, and I, you know, if I were grading your test, I would mark this wrong. Um, what, one of the things, because lots of, I, mean, I look back through the questions of what you guys put in. Um, 0.5 uh, 
0.5 kilograms is a wrong answer. Anytime you have a, uh, a number, of, something that's in the tenths or hundredths place, you always must put a zero, a 0 0.5. Because if it has a zero there, then, then it tells you that that's a zero and there should be a point there. Because what's the one thing if you write a number that's really hard to see or even read on a paper? It's a point, a tiny little thing. That's why we put this leading zero, 0 0.5. And when you give the order verbally, um, if you're reading back an order and someone tells you 0.5 kilogram, then you're going to say 0 0.5 kilograms. You read back the order to make sure you are absolutely getting it correct. 0 0.5, 0 0.2. Jasmine says, um, or one half. I, it's usually better not just stay away from the fractions. Man, those fractions literally the most confusing thing ever um, and um, it really really I always convert all the all the fractions into um, decimals just because it's easier on the math uh, because trying to do the fraction lines across um, it, it just confuses things but it's definitely 0 0.5 is better but you can use fractions too it, it is acceptable so again let's get back to our example 4,000 grams or four, 4 grams is 4,000 milligrams so here's here's another example 0 0.25 grams 0 0.25 grams is how many milligrams? 0 0.25. Jasmine says she sucked. She agrees, but her school sucks. I'm sorry. Leslie, uh, fractions are for formulas, and that's correct. So 0 0.25 grams. Now, this was tricky because you have to think about what is that letter at the end, and it's grams. I want to go from grams to milligrams. Ignore the fact that it's a 0 0.25. So that means I need to do what? I need to multiply. I need to break the big number up into a smaller number, which is going to be a more of a quantity. So remember, big numbers, lots of numbers. So you know it's going to get m more quantity as you go across. So if I have 0 0.25 here, I can't have a, I mean, it would be unlikely that I would have a fraction on this side. I would need to have more of a number on that side. And lots of you guys are definitely talking about um, uh, 0 0.25 is 250, um, 250 milligrams, and that's right. So you multiply by a thousand. Um, very, very, very good. Um, very, very. That's correct. <clears throat> so um, another example. I can't believe I have so many examples in here. Um, is 1.25 grams. Again, same thing. 1.25 grams um, is. Um, um, how many milligrams? How many milligrams? Oh, right away. 1,250. 1,250. So what do we do? 1.25, we multiply by 1,000. Very simple, 1,250 milligrams. Correct. Um, somebody asked about grains. Um, what about grains? Um, grains, I didn't include it in here because it's, I don't know for a fact that they phased it out. I know that a lot. it's still in a several of the books. It's unlikely that you're going to see um, see it on your exams, uh, standardized exams, but it may be there. So one gram is how many grains? Just just jot jot this jot, jot it drill down. Yeah, it was on, okay. It was on your HESI. I mean, yes, but if you think about um, uh, what is grains? How many grains is one gram? One gram. Cindy says sixty. Cindy, I'm pretty sure it's 15 grains, um, and that's that's written GR. I always write out grains every time I talk about grains, uh, but um, one gram is 15 grains, which is 60 milligrams. Does that make sense? I, I don't have it in here, um, but I always remember one gram is 15 grains, uh, just just to make it easy. You need to remember just one. Just remember one, then you know how to convert, convert it around. So the last one, going back, uh, going again, is 800 milligrams. 800 milligrams is how many um, how many grams? 800 milligrams is how many grams? So we need to do what? No more multiplication. We need to divide. So if we divide by a thousand, then we should end up with 0 0.8. So I see lots of you guys typing in, and you didn't put in um, grams, the G at the end. I would mark that wrong. You didn't put in the zero before the eight. I would mark that on. It's 0 0.8 grams. You have to give your, um, especially if you're in a pharmacology course, make sure you include what the ending is. Make sure you remember the leading zero, because all those things are things you would get marked wrong for very easy stuff. And that's what we're here today is to make sure we can do the easy stuff. So we talked about building. We're building up 1.25 grams, or 1.25 pounds. 1.25 pounds is how many um, kilograms? Oops, sorry. 1.25 pounds. Uh, 
Christine's about asked about just moving the decimal point, and yeah, we can move that. Um, that's what I, I said. We don't really talk about that today, but you can move it three places, which would be thousands multiplying by thousand. So 1.25 pounds is how many kilograms? Well, it's 2.75. So we multiply. Um, we have pounds, a small number, and we want to remember um, uh, kilograms. So, oh, sorry, I think I'm. Again, I'm getting my numbers mixed up. I'm talking talking way too fast and reading too many things, um, as usual, uh, which always ends up happening because I get sidetracked. But if we have 2.75 kilograms, 2.75 kilograms is how many grams? 2750. So if we know that it's 2750 grams, then we know that's 2.75 uh, milligrams, 2,750,000 milligrams. So that being said, that's enough um, yammer, yammer on the easy stuff. Let's talk about equations. We're going to run through some equations, um, and we are going to um, run through them and uh, do some examples. So we're going to talk about tablets real quick, just a basic, and then we're going to do um, uh, we got an I, some IV drug at the end and um, some weight-based stuff. The biggest thing with all of these, again, same thing. Make sure you don't miss the easy stuff. What's the question asking me? How much am I supposed to give? What's the quantity that I've been given? In the question, you should be writing these things out. Make sure you do all of your conversions, so make sure you have pounds to kilograms. You have it in the right amount. Calculate to the right form, and then calculate your dose. We're kind of going to run through these exact same steps with every single question. Now, we can skip a step if it's not relevant, but we know that we've got to pretty much ask all the questions. you got to run through the checklist, otherwise you're going to make a mistake, and you're going to miss the easy things. So those five rights, pretty much. Um, and then also asking to make sure we have um, correct. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So um, the first thing here is tablets. So we really got that same exact formula that we have for the conversions there. Um, someone asked a question about pounds a kilo. Okay, so we'll get to that pounds a kilogram question at the end because uh, I didn't put the actual equation on the screen because we did a little bit earlier. So, The nurse is given an order for azithromycin, 0 0.25 grams PO to be administered each day. She has 125 milligram tablets on. How many tablets should she administer to the patient each day? Okay, so first off, any nursing question, no matter what, you really just want to say, what's this question asking me? The, well, the question is asking me, how many tablets should I give the patient each day to uh, give the patient 0 0.25 grams every day, right? So how many tablets do I need to give to reach 0 0.25 grams? I could write that down. I've rephrased the question so that I understand. Now the problem is I don't have very simple things to, to make this work. That's correct. What do I have? I always pretty much go back and if I just go back to my checklist. What's the question asked me? Why well, rephrase the question? What's the total dose that I'm giving? What's the quantity I've been given in the question? And then, of course, any kind of conversions and calculations, which we're going to work through. So if we look at this, um, oh, lots of you guys are already typing in the answer. Aren't you just so smart? So first off, we're going to do how many tablets, how many milligram tablets daily? Um, what's the total we need to give? Well, we need to give 0 0.25 um, grams PO. PO is, of course, by mouth every day, and we've been given 125 milligram tablets. Yeah, every time I get one of these questions, again, depending on where you're at on the level of understanding pharmacology math, this could look like a really easy question. But every single time, it messes, it messes people up. Because I need to give 0 0.25 grams PO. 0 0.25 grams. Let's see if I got this here. There it is. I, I've got, I need to give 0 0.25 grams. Grams. I wrote that down, and I realized if you just do enough to realize that 0 0.25 grams, right? If you just realize that that is not the same as milligrams that you you have, then you know you need to do some multiplication or division to get to the right grams. So let's go through it. If I have 0 0.25 grams um, that I need to give, right? So how many 0 0.25 grams? Well, 0 0.25 grams is 250 milligrams. I multiplied 0 0.25 times 1,000 to get 250. 250 milligrams, right? Yeah. Oh, my goodness, you guys are killing me with some of these. Um, every now and then 
a couple of people throwing some crazy answers. So it's 250 milligrams. Now, if I were given a question literally that simple, 250 milligrams, well, it was pretty easy to see that I need to give 250 milligrams per day, but I have what type of tablets? Well, I only have 125 milligram tablets. So how many tablets do I need to give? Well, if I have 125 milligram tablets on hand, I divide that into 250, it's going to give me what? It's going to give me a total of two. So 250 milligrams is what I need to give, and I divide that by whatever I have on hand, what I've been given is 125 milligrams, then I'm going to equal two or two tablets. So I can give two tablets to that patient by mouth to equal the order of 0 0.25 grams. Now, in real life, you're going to be given 250 milligrams um, unless you have um, um, uh, chlamydia, and then you're going to get one gram, uh, one time, PO per mouth, by mouth, right? Am I right? Am I right? Come on, that was, that was a great, that was a great medicine joke. Come on, guys, you guys are killing me. Anyway, you're always going to be given milligrams in real life, but this is pharmacology math, and the math questions are trying to trick you. They are set up to trick you. This is the one part, usually I say all of everything in nursing school or med school or, or paramedic school, or whatever school you're in, is not really designed to trick you. Uh, farm math is really designed to see if you're paying attention to trick you. Uh, it's the only place you really have to just be careful and you need to read every single, single thing because this changes the question a lot if you accidentally um, picked, um, if you were looking at multiple choice answers and you saw maybe, you know, four tablets or 200 tablets or 0.25 tablets because they're going to give you the, the, the wrong multiplication that you would do in trying to eye it. Correct. So the next one is a very common, this is one you're very likely to give, and these are very, um, very good to, to understand these. Um, this is a very common one we give because we give it per ml. So a patient's to receive morphine. Huh, morphine sounds like a fun time today. Eight milligrams IV now. Wow, that's a lot. Okay, well, hook me up. Morphine sounds like fun. Um, eight milligrams. You have five milligrams in two milliliters. How many milliliters should be administered? So let's run through our, our scenario. I'm going to ask myself, well, what do I need to give? Well, they're asking me how many milliliters of, of morphine that I need to give uh, to, to equal eight milligrams. Okay, we can figure this out. I think we can. Let's see what we got, sorry. Oh, somebody said um, reconstitution, that they're confused. Well, just wait for a minute because we got that too. So let's talk through this one. We know we have to run through the scenario. So how many milliliters? That's the question. How many milliliters do you need to give? Well, what is, what, a, what is the ultimate result we need to give? Well, we need to give eight milligrams. So the question is how many milliliters do we need to give to get to eight milligrams, right? Yeah, milligrams, milliliters. Oh, my goodness, it gets so confusing. But if you break it down to the simplest form, and I love saying that over and over because it just sounds like a catchy phrase and it makes me sound smart. Break it down to the simplest form. Is everything in milligrams? Well, yes, everything's in milligrams and everything's in milliliters. So this is an easier question. So what we want to do is calculate how much in milligrams is in each ml. If you break it down to literally the simplest form, break it down to the simplest form, how many milligrams are in each ml? Mm, well, how do we do that? Well, we have five milligrams in two milliliters. So if I divide everything by two, then that would tell me what? Well, I have my little clicker here. It's kind of crazy. So that's going to tell me if I divide this by two, that means if I have five milligrams in two milliliters of solution, then I have one ml that's going to be 2.5 milligrams because there's 2.5 milligrams per one ml. Sometimes if you get a really complicated dopamine infusion or you get a complicated um, uh, question that has a picture of the IV bag, it's a really common one that they give you, look at that picture. Look at the picture because it very often will tell you so many milligrams in 500 mLs, but actually on, on the uh, bag, it may actually break down how much is in per each mL, and it makes it a little bit easier. So if we look at this, 5 milligrams in 2 mLs, that's a really concentrated morphine. Holy crap, right? Um, that's a you know concentrated morphine. Well, that's the question we'd be given, um, and um, that's what we do. So I get, I'm getting lots of answers, and um, 
I, I love getting lots of answers. <clears throat> so Beverly asks right now is like when you get a question like this, should you round or do we do so when the question asks? Well, like I said earlier, is it really important really just to not round until the end. Um, don't round until the very end um, unless it's some you know really bizarre long uncop you know something that you can't round. If it's you know if it's three 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 then okay you could round because that's you know you're you're going to stay in the ballpark. But don't round and then round again then round again if it's a complicated question because you're going to get very far away from the answer. Um, if, if you have an evil nursing instructor, which is possible. I know everybody has an evil nursing instructor in their past. I have my own. Um, if I had to dissect another placenta in my life from nursing school, I would go puke. Okay, so um, 2.5 milligrams per ml. Now, how do we get 2.5 milligrams per ml to get 8 milligrams? So what do we need to do next? Well, we have to then, and that's right, lots of you guys are typing in, the answer. Um, lots of you guys are talking about your evil instructors. I agree. There's a, there, are, there are a couple out there in every school. How many mLs do you need? Well, how many mLs do I need? Well, I need to give what? Well, how do I calculate that? I'm going to take my eight milligrams that I need to give. The dose that I need to give. Remember from the beginning, I need to give eight milligrams, and I'm going to divide that by what I have, which is 2.5 milligrams. I have 2.5 milligrams in each one of these mLs to tell me that I need 3.2 mLs, and that's right, lots of you guys typed in the answer, very, very, very good. If you can think through it, all of these are the same. There are not a single one of these that change over time. If you can break it down to how much medicine is in each, every single mL, then pretty much you could calculate what it's in. If you could move from milligrams to grams to micrograms to kilograms, whichever way you go about and you understand how to do it, you're not going to mess these up. Because if you can break everything down to the simplest form or the same form, all you have to do is multiply it, and it's, it really is simple. If you're looking at me like man crazy right now, it's because you just have to practice um, and make sure you're not missing any of the basics because the basics are so, so, so important. Uh, <clears throat> Chante will get to yours, which is right here. So here's an IV medication. This one's a difficult one. Your patient has a cefepime, 1,000 milligram, ordered every six hours. You're given two grams diluted in 500 mLs of normal saline. How many mLs should be administered? Mm, these are the fun ones. Love it every single time. I enjoy these questions, and we're going to break down using the exact same methodology of talking about the same thing exactly like we did with all the others. All of those basics still apply. First off, what is cefepime? What kind of medication is cefepime? If this is a review for you, you should know that cefepime, ceph, is what type of medication? What type of medication? What type of medication? Mm, it's CEPH, and if you, we have a pharmacology base, uh, pharmacology um, overall webinar, which will teach you that CEPH is a, um, a prefix for cephalosporins, which are cephalosporins are antibiotics. Lots of you guys, Geraldine, T uh, Teresa, right, right away, very good. And Arlene, yes, I see you. Arlene's back. She was here before. So um, that's right. So we've got a it's an antibiotic we're giving. A pretty it's a pretty high dose of um, of cefepime. Or sorry, yeah, uh, sorry we're giving 1,000 milligrams. Never mind. Um, so pretty standard dose of uh, cefepime that we're going to be giving today. So we're going to give 1,000 milligrams every six hours. Okay, we need to give cefepime every six hours. Now we're giving the cefepime. I think maybe I even have it on the next one. I feel like maybe it's not in this one. We need to give it over 30 minutes. Um, and that's what the order is. I feel like I might have left it out here. I apologize. I think I added it in the next slide. So the first question is, let's just restate what's going on. The question asks is, how many milliliters should be administered? So the question, let's restate it. How many milliliters per minute do we need to give? Well, we're not going to give it over six hours. We're going to give it over 30 minutes. Let me just actually, I'm um, uh, pretty sure that's what, we, what we've got in the next, the next slide. Sorry to confuse you. I know it, I hate when I mix something up on one of these and then it, Everyone gets mad at me. <clears throat> so it's over 30 minutes is what we're doing. So if you're doing this um, calculation already and you're speeding through it, it's six. It's every six hours over 30 minutes because that's a little tidbit that will mix you up because you'll calculate it get to be given over a long six hours when in reality it's over 30 minutes. And if you think about if you have the knowledge and you're doing your NCLEX or you're doing your HESI or you're studying for your ATI final exam, you know because antibiotics are not given over a long period of time. They're given over an hour. They're given over 30 minutes. 
They're a dose that needs to be given right now because you're going to repeat the dose in six hours or in 12 hours. There aren't very many antibiotics or any other drug that's given on a constant infusion that's a, that's a, you know, given every certain number of hours. It would be given at so much milliliters per minute, or you're going to be calculating it on a weight per milliliters per minute if it's a constant infusion. Just a little tidbit to keep in mind. So, um, and I think that's what happened when I wrote this question. I was thinking too much of reality. But I fixed it in the next one. So how many milliliters should be administered? First off, how many milliliters per minute? So the total to give is cefepime 1,000 milligrams every six hours over 30 minutes. So you've been given two grams in 500 milliliters. Mm, definitely, definitely very confusing. And I agree, something you kind of have to stop and think about. So if we think about, first off, we got to start with the basics. So if the first thing you do right away is you convert everything to the same constant, simplest form, then you know that everything converted to milligrams is going to help you because that's really where you're going to get to the end. So if we convert this two grams to milligrams, then we're going to be easily be able to tell that we have two grams is 2,000 milligrams because we're going from one gram is 1,000 milligrams. So we're multiplying two by 1,000, 2,000 milligrams. Easy, super simple. The next thing we want to do is really calculate how much medication is in every ml of this bag. So here I've got, I've converted to milligrams. So I've taken my two gram solution that I've been given and I've converted that to 2,000 milligrams per 500 ml. So if I had 2,000 per 500 ml, how many, how much medication is in every single milliliter? How many? How much medication is every milliliter? That's right. So you divide 2,000. If 2,000 is in 500 ml, literally all you have to do is divide what is on the what the calculation is. I could divide 2 grams by 500 and get 0 0.25 grams per 500 per ml, right? But I'm, or, sorry, uh, 4.004. So I'm going to see right here, 2,000 divided by 500 is 4 milligrams per 1 ml, right? That's right, 4, yeah, 4 milligrams per ml. And that's what we can think about, breaking it down to the simplest form. So then we know right there. We can get four milligrams in every ml. So let's just put that on the side burner and think about that basic form. Because now we need to think about how much we need to give. How much do we need to give of this medication? Well, I know I need to give 1,000 milligrams. 1,000 milligrams of the medication I need to give. I need to give 1,000 milligrams, and I have four milligrams per ml now. Hmm, this doesn't look so hard. I've got 1,000 milligrams I need to give. So if I have 1,000 milligrams I need to give, and I have four milligrams per ml, so I take with one thousand milligrams, and then I do what? I divide it by four. So I take my thousand milligrams and I divide that by four. Then I'm going to end up being 250 mLs. And when I when I when I give this kind of example every single time, um, and every student comes to me like, Kendall, okay, great, I followed along with what you said perfectly, and then I got to my exam and it didn't give me the exact same format and I fell apart. And the problem here is, what's problem is you didn't set yourself up in the same format. If you set yourself up with question, how what's the question asking me? Okay, it's asking me how many milliliters per minute. Well, we didn't, we're not there yet, so this is not the answer. We're not done. What's the total that I that I need to give? I need to give 1,000 milligrams over 30 minutes. So, is my answer right now as we stand 250 mLs? So I need to give 250 mLs over 30 minutes, right? So we're not really, there's a whole another level of the question we can go into. And then if you always give yourself what you've been given, two grams and 500, and then you break it all down to the same simplest form, and then you calculate per ml, then you calculate how much to give, then you can build back up. It's like breaking everything down simple and then building back up. Um, Mimi says she just skips these questions because they're complicated. I don't think that's the best policy, nor do I think that's the best practice, nor do I recommend it, uh, but I understand your frustration. But you just have to break it down. I mean, you really just have to break it all form and then build it all back up. It's really simple. So let's keep going because we're not done with this one. Because the next thing is here we have this over 30 minutes part, right? So we know we have 250 mLs that we need to give over 30 minutes. So if I know the whole dose, now the whole dose of what it's what I know I need to give, I know I need to give 
250 mLs of my 2 grams in 500 milliliters bag. That's a lot of words to say out loud. I try to keep straight, and that's why I always write it down. And that's why I always follow the exact same thing. I calculated my dose to be given. I know I need to give, I've got my 2,000 milligrams in 500 mLs, right? It's the same question. It's literally, I could ask you the same question, completely different, but it's, it's literally the same. I'm asking you to come up with a different answer. So with our one before, this question here, this could be a question all by itself. What's the overall dose that needs to be given? How many mLs? Well, it asked me milliliters a minute or mil mLs. The answer could be 250 but it could take me to the next level and ask me the exact same thing again, but it's going to ask me how much per minute. Make sure you pay attention to that because that's one thing that's going to trip you up and cause you a lot of easy questions that you're going to miss. So how many mLs per minute? Total to dose. Again, same thing. All of it is the same. So I know my calculated dose to be given is 2,000 mLs and 500 mLs, or 2,000 milligrams and 500 mLs. So I know I need to divide my mL by how many minutes. So I'm going to take that same 250 mLs I got from the last loop, building on top of it, and divide it by my 30 minutes here, my 30 minutes of time, so I know I need to give 8.3 mLs per minute. Yeah, I know. Lots of you are smarty pants, and you did so well by getting that um, faster. But if you follow the same, um, same process, you're always going to end up with the exact same answer. Um, Arette says um, she uses a, a kind of like a mnemonic, um, and she it, it's a good one. I like it, so I'm going to share it with you. It's um, D, so remember D is what the doctor orders. It's really the order because we know we have nurse practitioners, which many of you may end up being someday. Um, so we have the, the practitioner's order or the order. So doctor's order, D, H, what's on hand, so in your hand. S is the stock, and A is the answer. I kind of like it. It's a simple form. It's a lot of the same thing. Follow the exact same steps every time, and you won't mess it up, and that is absolutely right. <clears throat> um, lots of you guys come up with... I'm just looking through to see if we got any questions. Um, so somebody asked, what, what, uh, what decimal point should the MLs be rounded to? Well, most of your questions, if you get on a standardized exam, I'm not talking about your nursing exam that Joe Schmuckatelli, your nursing instructor, wrote and gave to you that you're filling in. I'm talking about a standardized exam like HESI or anything like that. It's typically the hundreds. Um, you don't want to go past hundreds because we don't usually give any drugs past hundreds place. But usually to the tenths place is what they probably are going to hit you with. So we end up with a bizarre answer that's 0 .0 blah, 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 blah. It's probably going to be rounding to like something like 8.3 mLs per minute, but no further than um, no further than hundreds. <clears throat> so um, let's uh, this one here. So IV medications again. So you receive an order for vancomycin, 15 milligrams per kilogram over two hours. Your 32-year-old female patient weighs 146.5 pounds. You have a solution of 250 mLs per one gram. What's the mLs per minute you should administer? What mLs per minute should you administer? Follow the exact same thing, whether we're using um, the same formula that we're using or we're using something like um, what Aret, Aret um, says she uses. What, what, are we, what do we have? What are we giving? What is the question asking us? So the question is asking us two things. How much is the dose per weight and how many mLs per minute do we need to give? Um, and that's really what we're coming down to. So here, you can kind of restate that, because if you restate it, then you can come down to the, you know, you need to write that down so you make sure you don't miss any of the easy stuff. So the first thing we need to do is get that weight calculated out. Every time you see a pounds, you probably need to be converting that, that weight to kilograms. So that's an easy thing that so often I see people miss. So 146 pounds, well, I know that I'm much lower number in kilograms than pounds. So if I'm 146.5 pounds, or this 32-year-old female patient is, what is that in kilograms? Well, I take 146.5 and divide by 2.2, which gives me 66.68 kilograms. And you can see I've taken this to hundreds place um, for now because that's a great place to come back to is hundreds place. So if I come back to hundreds place, um, right there we've got it. I see lots of you guys um, typing in answers um, and skipping steps, so that makes me feel good that we're um, definitely making, taking the time to, to do that. So 66.68, or two, if you use 2.2, yeah, there, you know, 2.2 is a round 
um, a rounded number. So you can use two point, you know, we can go further to 2.2 .2 into kilograms of pounds. So you should come up with right around 66.68. Now what's the next thing we need? Well, let's calculate how many milligrams per kilogram I need to give for this patient. What's the total dose I need to give? How much dose do I need to give for this weight? Well, the order I have is 15 milligrams per kilogram. So if I have 66.8 kilograms of the patient I need to give, then I need to do what? Well, I need to give 15 milligrams times 66.69. Um, and I don't know why I have 6.8 and 6.9 here. I must have done this question um, two different ways, but or I rounded up at the top and on the bottom. I don't know. But 66.69, 66.68, the point is it's going to come out literally almost exactly the same way. 66.68, 66.69. Um, kilograms equals right at about a thousand milligrams. 1,000.2, 1,000.22, 1,000.23 milligrams. So that's the total dose we need to give. I could have given you a question that, like the last question, says give a dose of 1,000 milligrams to this patient over a certain number of time, right? You can make it much more complex. Um, and what happens is if you don't understand how to do each piece of it, the weight in kilograms to pounds, pounds to kilograms, you don't understand how to do each piece, then the when, when someone says, jump in and teach me IV drug calculations, they're literally lost because they don't understand one of these little pieces along the way. This is messing them up. So if you follow the same thing over and over and over, you're not going to make any mistakes because you're building the same template that you're always following. So if I calculate this milligrams per kilogram, it's going to tell me my total dose of 1,000 milligrams, a lot like our last question, which is 1,000 milligrams, a thousand milligrams is how many grams? One gram. So one gram is going to tell me. The next thing we need to do is say, okay, well, how many, how much vancomycin do I have per mLs? Well, I have a solution of 250 mLs per one gram. 250 mLs per one gram. What mLs per minute should I administer? Now I know and you know that I could have given, we could have made this a lot more complex question by changing this up to where this wasn't one gram because we know one gram is 1,000 milligrams. So if I take my 1,000.2 milligrams and I know that I need to convert that to grams or convert grams to milligrams, then I know that here is the exact same amount that I need to give over 250 mLs or inside of 250 mLs. So it matches. So I know that I, if I put it in the simplest form, 1,000 milligrams is one gram, one gram here, one gram is 1,000 milligrams, divided by 250 is four milligrams per ml. So in every single milliliter of fluid, there are four grams of medicine. So what's the to total that I, need, that I need to give? This is duplicative because it's obvious. Um, I know I need to give 250 mLs. This is the same because I could have just skipped this step. And this is where you see so many people skipping ahead and like, oh yeah, I did it in my head. But we're not skipping ahead because I know 1,000 milligrams divided by four, right, is 250 mLs. It's essentially the same thing. This is one gram per 250 mLs. So here's my 250 mLs per one gram. What do I need to give? I need to give 1,000 milligrams. What is 1,000 milligrams? It's also one gram. So I could have looked at this easily and said, okay, well, it's one gram here. Well, I need to just give all 250 mLs. But if you want to double check, and that's one of the things that's really good when you're doing these questions, if you're learning and you're trying to figure it out, is if you have that double check, you're never going to miss one of these questions. Um, because so many times you end up with an all the way to the end of an answer, and then you stop all the way at the end, and you're like, okay, well, how do I double check my work? Well, let me just do it all over again. And then you do it all over again, you need something different, and you still don't know where to go. If you do the little double checks as you go, then you know that you're not making any mistakes. <clears throat> it's an extra step. This is an entire extra step. But it gives you that reassurance that you're doing the right thing. So how many mLs per minute do we need to give? Well, we need to give how many mLs per minute? Well, how many minutes do we need to give it over? Well, our question asks us that. It says we need to give it over two hours. Two hours is how many minutes? I hope I don't have to make a slide to tell you that one hour is 60 minutes and two hours is 120 minutes. So I need to give 120 minutes of fluid. So if I take how much I've got, my 250 mLs that I need to give now, right? And I take my 250 mLs and I divide it by that total minutes, then it's going to tell me 2 milliliters a minute. 2 milliliters a minute. 2.08 milliliters, if you want to be exact. But it would be very common to see an answer of 2.1 or even 2 milliliters a minute as an option, and those are all unless, 
and this is where I'm talking about the rounding. If the rounding, this is why you do the rounding at the end, because if you round it in the beginning, you could very easily end up with a, um, a very evil nursing instructor that gives you 2.15, 2.04, 2.1, you know, and it's very close, um, and it's, very, it's a best practice to round at the end. Um, so that's about right. If you said 2.1, if you said 2.08, those are absolutely correct. If you said two, I don't, um, I don't, <laughs> nope, sorry, Stitch, calm down. Um, that Those are all correct answers that I would definitely believe is correct, and on a fair, any type of style question that's out there, you would, um, you know, you would, if it was a standardized exam, you would, you would get it correct, um, and that's absolutely, absolutely true. Now, the other thing we can put in here, just the last little, the last hinge, and I didn't make a slide for this, um, because we are at our, our, our time limit, um, is if we put drops. So drops are written G-T-T-S. So if I, if I had drip rate, and that's a really, a really hard one, but if you understand all of this at the end, and I know I need to give two mLs per minute, right? All I have to do is add a whole other step of drips per minute. I could take this exact same question, and I could say, how many drips a minute do I need to give with a 60 drop set? a 60 drop set, 60 GTTS, how many drops? Well, the first thing, the first thing that's important to remember is the drip sets are how many drops equal one ml. You got your micro drip sets, which are 60 drops a minute. You have your uh, macro drop sets, which are 10 drops or 15, and there are some 20 drops per minute sets. So if I had a 60 drop per minute set, then I know I need to give two mLs, which is 60 drops a piece, which is 100 drops per minute that I would measure to give this rate over two hours to equal two, um, 250 mLs or one gram, 1,000 milligrams of the medication. Very simple if you follow the same steps every single time. Um, definitely, 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 uh, definitely true. Um, so today we, we I think I think this is the last question we've got here. Yeah. So just to, you know, just to kind of recap everything, make sure you know those medicine, medication administration basics. Don't miss that stuff. Routes administration, yes, important. Um, don't miss those conversions. Make sure you're doing that step every time. Make sure you're not missing the easy stuff. And of course, when you do those equations, make sure you follow every single step all the way. You can see how we don't need to do a hundred examples of questions to for you hopefully to have realized today where you're doing the problem. Is the problem that you're, you're having, is it not doing the same steps every time? It's very high likelihood that that's what you're doing. And you need to build a routine. When you, if you're having trouble and you're failing for math questions, it's because you're, tr you're looking at a question, every single question is gonna be different. And you're not in setting up yourself for success by saying, okay, well, what have I been giving? What's the question asking me? What's the dose that I need to give? Do they match? Create a step process checklist so that you can follow the same steps every single time so you're setting yourself up for success. And if you can skip over a step because obviously you realize one milligram equals, or 1,000 milligrams equals one kilogram, and you don't have to actually sit there and multiply it out times 1,000, great for you. But you're following the same steps every time. Whether you're doing it in your head or not is irrelevant, and that is exactly what people are doing. Um, exactly what people are doing for sure when you see them saying they're doing it in their, in their, in their head. Um, Jasmine asks if we're doing another uh, live math webinar. I don't have any questions prepped right now for live math webinars, but um, definitely for sure uh, it's a possibility. Um, Julia asks, uh, oh, even more questions. Next time, can we work kilograms per day every eight hours and ask for a dose? Working backwards, um, we could do that. That is true. It's not very likely that you're going to get that kind of question on a standardized exam because it's not a very, unless you're doing pharmacy, it's not a realistic question. However, um, it's important to know to do that to check your work um, and to work backwards. But definitely is an is a extra level to go through. Um, doo, 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 doo. Oh, Arlene. Arlene always asks if we have a study guide. 
I don't have a study guide good for this one, but um, I am making lots more study guides now, finally. Um, Leslie asked when our next webinar is. I don't have another um, webinar scheduled right now, I don't think, but we're going to have one either week, probably week after next. Amit asks about copy of the webinar. There is a cop. We are recording this webinar, of course. You can check us out. I always forget to put this. I don't know if I got a slide in here or not. I might need to do it. Um, you can write into us at feedback at picmonic.com. You can go to Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter at Picmonic Kendall if you're interested in seeing all my quirky tweets or seeing where I'm at at a convention or where I'm hiding in the world. Um, you can follow all of the recorded versions of this. There is a recorded version of this webinar um, where I probably went a little bit slower. There is a pediatrics webinar, um, Terry, um, all on YouTube at Picmonic Video. They're all free. There's no gimmicks. There's no catches. Um, absolutely correct. You can go do those. They are there. If you have any questions, you can reach out to us. Feedback at Picmonic.com. You can follow us on YouTube. Go to YouTube. Um, our feedback and our, our polls say that only about 50% of our users um, have seen those or that you're aware that they're out there. Um, they're recorded versions, but so I'm not going to be talking to you, but you can talk to me um, or you can leave comments and we'll get them. Uh, you can write in whatnot. But as always, um, you can check out Picmonic.com. It's free to set up for an account to get all this stuff. Sign up for our email so that you're in the loop for the next webinar, no matter what it will be. Um, and if you check on those YouTube uh, videos at Picmonic Video on YouTube, um, there are some study guides and free uh, things in there as well. As always, have a great day. Good luck studying. Reach out to us if you need us. And have a good night. Yes, I agree, Carmen. Steve is crazy. Good night and good luck studying.